ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹ ಗಣದಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ ನಮಾ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣಿ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮೇ ಗೌರತ್ವಿಷೇ ನಮಃ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚೈವನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಾಯೇಶ್ವದ್ರೇಷು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವದ್ಯುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಿಕಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕಿ ನಂದನಾಯ ನಂದಗೋಪಕುಮಾರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ನಮೋ
You're coming? You can switch off that light, I think. This is 3.24.12. Brahmo Vacha Vayame Apachitistata Kalpita Nirvyali Kataha Yanme Sanja Grihe Vakyam Bhavan mana damana yan Brahmo vacha Vayame apachitistata Kalpita nirvyali kataha Yan me sanja grihe vakyam Bhavan mana damana yan The translation one of it. Where's the mic with it? Yeah. Huh? Where is the mic? Hare Krishna. Lord Brahma said, My dear son Kardam, since you have completely accepted my instructions without duplicity, showing them proper respect, you have worshipped me properly. Whatever instructions you took from me, you have carried out, and thereby you have honored me. Yeah. So this morning we are discussing on the topic of accountability. You see, Brahma is appreciating uh, Kardama that uh, whatever instructions I gave you, you heard them with proper respect. You were not careless. You were not inattentive. You did not ignore them. Uh, and you accepted those, not only you heard them with respect, some people with folded palms hear instructions and they, they don't do anything. <laughs> so you carried them out without any duplicity. Duplicity means sometimes one uh, resorts to cunning uh, ways to escape from the instructions given by giving some glib excuses and uh, yeah. but looking like a good boy. Huh? That is called duplicity. So, he says that you did not give any duplicitous excuses. You heard with proper respect. And also, you worshipped me properly. He says that means you actually adore your superior, value your superior. Actually, the meaning of valuing superior means taking their instructions also seriously. Right now? And then whatever instructions you took from me, you have carried out. Thereby you have honored me. Like if a uh, superior tells a subordinate, you do this, and then you uh, hear with very great attention and without duplicity, you make an effort to execute it, and then complete the task and then submit it. Huh? Then thereby you have honored me. So, uh, one time Shri Prabhupada was in uh, Vindavan, he had returned from abroad. So he went to his uh, Prabhupada's quarters. So he opened the tap and saw the cold water was coming, chill water was coming. In the hot water, there was no hot water. That tap was not working. So air was coming. So Prabhupada called uh, one of the leaders. I don't want to mention any names because all those people who were in Prabhupada's times are now big, big leaders now. So one of the leaders, he called and said, hey, I had told you this, that when I run, come to my quarters, the hot water should be ready. He said, wait a minute, Prabhupada, I'll just check. And he called another devotee. 
And that devotee said, he had delegated to another devotee. So in front of Prabhupada, there were six devotees standing. Huh? All of them pointing fingers to one another. Huh? Prabhupada said, just see, this is called passing the buck huh? to other people. See, if I told you, who is responsible? You are responsible. You may say, I told him, and he says, he told him, he told him, he told him. There may be a dozen people, that doesn't matter. But whomever I told you, that person should be responsible. And that is accountability for the services right now. So, generally there is a tendency in the conditioned soul to blame other, other souls, huh? rather than take responsibility for the service given. Correct. So, Prabhupada was very upset. So, Prabhupada uh, not only wrote the Bhaktivedanta purports, not only traveled extensively and preached uh, vigorously Krishna consciousness, but he also taught how we should behave ourselves. Huh? How as disciples, as followers, as uh, members of this Krishna consciousness movement, you know, what are uh, our responsibilities? Huh? And, uh, and also it's a serious movement because the mission of the movement is, uh, you know, and in every town and village, huh, the holy name has to be spread. This is not a small task. If we have to do such a big task, then we also need people with very high, high level qualities. We need huh, very sublime qualities. They should be perfect in all respects. And one of the aspects of perfection today that we are discussing is accountability. Hmm. So, hmm. when you, when you uh, talk of accountability, you have to be accountable to your superiors. Huh? You have to be accountable to your peers. And accountable means what? Jawabdar. In Hindi, we call it Jawabdar. Huh? For example, you take a bike from your friend. Huh? You, he, you have to first ask him, how long can I take it? He says, for two hours you can take it. Then within two hours you have to come back and hand it over to him. Then you are accountable for resources that you take from others. Right now. And you have to make sure that uh, bike is also in good condition. Not that you punctured it and then kept it silently. Hmm? Within two hours, I have given you take it. And then when he wants to go to college, it's punctured. And he asks you, hey, Prabhu, it is punctured. Yeah, it's punctured. Please repair it yourself. Right? That is not accountable, isn't it? He has given you a facility. You have to return it as it was before. Hmm? And uh, if you take for two hours and you come after five hours, and you say, sorry, Prabhu, it got a little late in the college for me. Then it doesn't come to his use. Then we are not accountable. Uh, the next time will he give you? He will make sure he doesn't give you next time. Uh, is it not true? So, uh, and also, in case you took the bike, uh, somewhere uh, somebody hit the bike and a dent came, uh, you have to tell your friend that, uh, Prabhu, see, somebody came and hit the bike, see, here there's a dent. But I promise you that I will get it repaired. It is my job because I took it from you. Uh, make sure I do that. So in those days, one uh, boy took a laptop of another boy, the same center. And then he opened it and did something, <laughs> everything crashed. The computer is not working. So he returned it back to the owner. And the owner boy opened it and it was not starting. He said, see, when I gave you, it was in good condition. Now it is like sort of not working now. So you know. I don't know what you will do, but you have to make it in a working condition and give me. So then this fellow, this fellow said, oh, I didn't do anything, he said. Then if you didn't do anything, why it's not working? If you give me a not working computer, then how will I be able to use it? Then the, both the fellows went to OC. The OC said the same thing. So you used it, so you, have, you are account accountable to him, to give it in a proper condition. Then uh, he went and then he came to know that the hard disk had crashed. So now he has to purchase hard disk. So he said, Prabhu, I have found out your hard disk has crashed, so please change it. Isn't it? So then this fellow said, how the hard disk crashed? You have done something, some mistake and thing you did. Therefore it crashed. So he said, he said, you know, Prabhu, I think your hard disk is an old one. Because it became old, it crashed, I, I think, he said. So, that, that fellow didn't agree. He said, no, 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 I just put it three months ago only. He said, there was an argument between the two. And the matter was taken to OC. The OC took it to PM. PM took it to Brahmacharya. So, Brahmacharya brought to me. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, matter came to me. Because 
this fellow wants him to pay the amount and that fellow is not ready to pay the amount. Then my matter came to me, I told them that because you took it from him, you should be grateful to him. Yeah? Because he gave you for using it. Yeah? First of all, you should have some gratitude. Not only gratitude, you should have concern that because it was in working condition when he gave me, it is my duty also to give him in a working condition. That, that also becomes my obligation, my duty, my accountability to him. Because I, when I took it, it was in a proper condition. And also I put some commands and everything that caused some damage in the computer. Sometimes we do, no? Sometimes certain things we do, which are not, uh, certain things when you do in the computer, the part gets, you know, something happens. Certain uh, type of operations can cause damages also, correct now? When you make certain type of approaches. So, I told him, first you make this boy understand the seriousness of the matter. So, they did that. And the boy slowly understood it, yes. Because then, generally nobody will give you anything. But he's giving you, you should be grateful, accountable, you should be responsible and everything. He understood that. So, I told him, tell the boy that he has to pay the full amount for the hard disk. Initially, the boy was very much uh, crying, but finally he agreed. You know, he said, uh, okay, please, little by little, I'll try to pay. I won't be able to give for it. And I told you, tell the other boy that, you know, this boy used it only for a very short time. You should not ask a single penny from him, ideally speaking. Huh? Uh, because, you know, uh, his computer parts are unpredictable. They can crash any time. Huh? Just like when a crow's hat in a tree, the proof, fruit falls. He says, I crow only caused the fruit to fall. Somebody says, wind blew, so it fell. Somebody's fruit became ripe, it fell. Huh? Somebody says, no, no, the branch was moving in the wind, it fell. Or somebody says, a combination of these things fell. All speculations. Huh? Isn't it? Nobody can exactly say why, what happened, why. So this boy should be told, he just used for a few minutes and you are demanding the whole hard disk from him. It's unreasonable. Huh? You should not ask anything. You should, you know. You should accept it as your destiny. Mm. You know. Finally, he also said, okay, Prabhuji, that's correct, Prabhuji, you know. A poor fellow, he, did, he would not have damaged and all. Nobody will intentionally damage anything. Mm. Okay, Prabhuji, I will uh, wave it off. Mm. I will also work out to purchase. <clears throat> and then after both of them agreed, <clears throat> then I told the leader, you tell that boy who used it uh, to pay half the amount, I said. Then this boy, you tell him, although you are not supposed to get anything, you are going to get. Then both of them became grateful. Mm -hmm. like, nah. Nah. And both of them remained friends. Um, actually, the proper consciousness is very important. Correct, nah? Otherwise, we break friendships very easily. So, when it comes to accountability, uh, for the things we take from others, we should be accountable. And uh, and unnecessarily, we should not take also. As far as possible, we should avoid. Some people are so, their mind is so made that everything they take from others only. They never purchase their own things. Hey, give me your pen. Hey, give me your notebook. No. Can I take your bike? Some people even say, can I use your shirt and pant also? You know, boys use, you've seen that. I remember in my college days, one boy puts his shirt in the hanger, other boy wears it and goes. <laughs> you've seen that? <laughs> They take everybody else's things eh? and they will never use their money to purchase anything, always. They'll go to a hotel, they'll eat the food and say, hey, you pay it and they'll go away. Hmm? What kind of culture is this? Eh? Especially amongst youngsters, we see this, isn't it? When you become a devotee, you have to completely give up these activities. Eh? Very, very bad. We should, uh, as far as possible, not ask anything from anybody. Hmm? We should use our own things and we should feel hesitant. Some coach should be there to ask. Even if we have to ask someone, we have to make sure that we give it back properly huh? and the way we took it. And then you say thank you to them and you have to tell them sorry for having troubled you and all that, isn't it? So, this is with, us, with respect to the resources uh, that we take from other people. And one of the most important resources is the money. If you are given any money by your superior or your equal or whatever, huh? you have to be accountable. Hisab kitab, we say, no? Pakka. Prabhupada kept even 10 rupees. You can see Prabhupada's accounts. Prabhupada used to write, one penny he will not waste. You know, Prabhupada took 40 rupees from India. You all know that. Huh? He went to America. He didn't spend a single penny. He brought the whole 40 rupees back. Can you imagine? And he started a big movement there. Huh? Isn't it? And when he came, 
he had to go to chipiwada temple he went in a rickshaw and that fellow when he got down uh, prabhat got down that rickshaw wala was cheating and demanding more and prabhat had a good fight with him he didn't pay him the full amount huh? the fellow that he was demanding prabhat said whatever your due i am giving you huh? so he was uh, in one sense you may say he was stingy in spending money but those people who are stingy only can save money huh? otherwise you won't be able to save money so sometimes what happens with us if it is uh, not your personal money if it is samstha money huh? belongs to institution then you may spend very lavishly huh? very carelessly you may throw it here and there because it is whose money not my money you may take it very casually correct no hmm. like for example one day my toothpaste was uh, missing you know where is it is it i'll get a new one no not a new one where is the old one i only finished half of it find out search it a half an hour he searched and then he found out that it is here hmm. so uh, one should know that propa's money you know we should uh, spend it very very as uh, stingily we would spend our own money one should always remember one should not waste money unnecessarily correct right now like uh, i tell me assistant always book my ticket in you know sleeper class don't book in ac class mm-hmm. so once you ask prabhu yes is very comfortable you know you can do your work and everything of course i said uh, one reason is i like to get fresh air in ac you don't get fresh air mm-hmm. isn't it in uh, sleeper another thing when you go in sleeper coach you know you also can travel with uh, people who are poor and uh, can experience what how life is in the world outside huh? otherwise if you go in a uh, first class ac second class ac you always live like a elite person you don't understand the difficulties and troubles that common people undergo correct no on the other hand you go in a sleeper class one time isolness jayadut maharaj came now when they were booking ticket he told to book uh, sleeper tie ticket and some of you to the shop there Uh, Maharaj, first class? No, 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 first class. Keep going. They were, 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 they were surprised. How, how will he go in a sleeper class? You know, Maharaj, you know sleeper class is general. I know very well. I know better than you. <laughs> Maharaj said, I'm in India so long. I know what it is, he said. So then Maharaj sat in a sleeper coach. And he couldn't believe their eyes. It's a sannyasi going in a sleeper coach. And then uh, somewhere in uh, Luan Avalar, they think some devotees came. They came to the Maharaj is coming through the train. they were searching in first class second class and then they found him in the sleeper coach and they were shocked also maharaj sitting with all other people actually i don't know how many of you know maharaj has walked several uh, thousand miles in india by foot he has done this padayatra he has walked the previous years so the idea is that maharaj used to say that we should not take krishna's money for granted we should spend as minimum as possible for personal expenditure no and make sure that as much money of the sanstha will be spent for lord service rather than for our personal enjoyment and uh, and also of course it doesn't mean you can never go in second class uh, i mean you can never go in second ac third ac or something in case there is no ticket available in sleeper then i also book in third ac sometimes you know uh, or sometimes the train is not suitable because of limited time we go by flight also sometimes yeah? where there's a need but generally speaking we should be Uh, if you take some money from iskon you should make sure that every penny is well spent you have hisab kitab accounts and submit it back because with that money sometimes what happens your two packets you know you distributed books and put money here then you take your money and put there that also there it gets mixed up anybody has experience of that money getting mixed up correct and then it becomes a problem you don't know which is krishna's money which is your money so one boy he uh, while giving hisab kitab there was a problem in the money then he admitted honestly prabhu ji my money and krishna's money got mixed up so i thought better keep everything myself only hmm? i said better what you should do give everything to krishna because if you give everything to krishna even if your money part, partly you gave it to him that's a dan charity but if you keep krishna's money with you then you are going to get in trouble huh? because one story comes in the mahabharata one time a camel and a jackal met each other hmm. so the camel asked the jackal hey foolish creature look at you you are eating all dirty stuff hmm. this is uh, uh, left out leftovers of tiger and lion whatever flesh is left you are eating that who were you in your last life jackal says that in my, in my last life i was uh, uh, you know 
uh, I stole one Brahmin's money uh, and I tried to enjoy that money. Because I stole Brahmin's money, I became a jackal now. Uh, and I'm living a life like this. And then the, he asked the camel, how did you become such a creature? You are by biting the thorny bushes and you know your blood is coming out of the mouth. What did you do? He asked it. He said, I, I forced the Brahmana and drove him out of his land and you know took over the possession of his land. So I did that. So the, both these people had uh, misappropriated Brahmana's money. Correct now? So Shastra said the Brahmana's money or Krishna's money, Krishna's uh, movement money, that is called as Brahmaspad. Huh? Brahmaspad means it is it, it glows with effulgence, that money, because it is meant for large service. It's Lakshmi actually. Huh? It cannot be used for personal purposes. Yeah, one should be accountable for every single penny that we take. Uh, one time in our in our ashram, some brahmachari, one of the brahmacharis had kept some money in the side packet. So we gave him two, three thousand rupees and he had kept it inside. And the, it's lying in the ashram in Kunjivari temple, what ashram? It's a big uh, dormitory only. Lying. So one fellow was cleaning. Suddenly he saw some currency notes and then he saw it was the three K was there. He took it and gave it to manager. And uh, and this brahmachari doesn't even know that the money is taken off also. He is in his own world. Eh? And he's taking the bag here and there. And one day the manager caught him. Hey, where is the three case? Which three case? And then somebody had given you. Then he realized, ah, I told you I kept it inside. Let me search it. That time he was searching. And he couldn't uh, get it. I don't know, Puji, where is it? He said, don't worry, we got the money already. Because you are careless, because you are not earning the money. Therefore, you are careless. Hmm. So, because you, you can ask grihasthas, one penny they will not waste. If you see, you know. You know, while releasing money, they'll very carefully release. Because, you know, a man has to take care of his wife, children, you know, every penny they spend. And they are very intelligent in finding out which one is the cheap and best in India, you know. <laughs> this combination, cheap and best, they'll find that option. Huh? They, that is why there are so many choices nowadays. If you get this, it's best quality but very costly. If you go for this, it's cheap quality, good for nothing. Huh? And then they'll go for a compromise, which is cheap and best, correct, no? Now, Brahmachari, you know, because you are getting uh, money by charity, you know, you may just close your eyes and go for the best huh? because you are not earning money. Correct, no? So, one has to be very, uh, one cannot throw money here and there. One should be accountable for the money also. Hmm? Yeah. You, need, you know, in the Srimad, not Srimad Bhagavatam, in the Chaitan Charitamrita, in the Ante Lila, there is one pastime of Gopinath Patnaik. Hmm? This fellow was given money by the king hmm, to go and purchase horses for the battle. So he went to a faraway place to purchase horses, but then two years passed, he didn't give any, you know, no accountability. This is some people, very amazing people. Like somebody asked me a book, you know, some uh, book to read, I gave them. They took the book and the book never came back. And I forgot I, to whom I gave. I also forgot. And this is not only one person, I have given ten books like that, to ten different devotees. Because my room has it's a big collection of books and I give different devotees. Later on, one day, I told my assistant, write in the notice board, Whoever took books from Raj Shampoo have to return it before end of day. I wrote one, three, four books came back. Other fellows they took and they forgot also they took from me. I also forgot they gave them and they also forgot they took it. And one day I went to one of the rooms of Brahmachari while talking. I was seeing his books and my book was there. I said, hey, what is this? Sorry, Poji, I forgot, he said. So now I said, I'm going to go to every room and find out who has my book now. <laughs> because we are not accountable, you see, isn't it? So now what I am telling my assistant, whenever you give any book, note down what book is given and they have to, how much time are they going to return back. So to be, we have to be accountable when you take something from somebody. Forgetting is a very famous pastime of conditioned soul. <laughs> he will conveniently take everything and totally forget it. Correct, no? So, uh, before the book, what I was telling? Huh? Uh, Gopinath Patnag, yeah, correct. So he took money and then no response. For some people take something from us. It's like, you know, you put a stone into well and no sound after that. Huh? It's like the chup chup, he kept quiet. And then uh, King's uh, son, Badajan, you know, he called for Gopinath Patnaik. He said, hey, we gave you money for buying horses. Where are the horses? And that fellow said, no, the money got spent. How can money be spent? Because he had gone to see the dancing girls huh? somewhere. So... Then the Badajan became angry. He said, either you give me the horses or you'll be punished. 
he said. So this fellow said, Why like you ask us from? Initially he was trying to uh, avoid, but then Bhattajan was the king's son. So he was very firm. So then this man said, Okay, I have some horses I'll give you. And then he brought some of his other horses. And they were not uh, up to the mark expectation of Bhattajan. Bhattajan was unhappy. So he paid very less amount for that. And then, uh, you know, say 2,000 coins, uh, gold coins were given. So these horses you must have taken for a few hundred only. Balance 1,500 you have to either give me money or like, even from stipulated time you have to pay. So in this way it went. The whole idea is, you know, uh, because this person not only was not accountable uh, in giving back the money, he also teased the king's son. He told him, hey, you are costing my horses with such a low price. My horses are not like you. You are always uh, moving the head like this. You know? That person had some mannerism. Either he would move his head. The, my, look at my horses, they are beautiful. They are not like you moving the head like Something like that he said. And then the king's son got angry. Mm. He said, because he is insulting me, it went to ego problem. Huh? Then he said, put him in Changa. He said, Changa is actually like a sword placed in certain way that one will be killed by that. Of course, the long story cut short. Later on, he was saved, Gopinath Patnaik. But Lord Chaitanya was not happy. Lord Chaitanya said, he is taking money from government. But he is going to see dancing girls. Huh? This is nonsense. And you guys are coming to ask me to save him. I can't save him, he said. So, the lesson that we learn from that is, even though you may be a devotee, some material tendencies are there in us. Huh? Even after coming to, you may wear a tilak and kantimala and look like a devotee. Huh? But we have certain tendencies in us. So, he was not accountable for money. But the point is, if you, you are taking money, Krishna's money or Krishna's resources, uh, if you are not accountable, eventually you become obliged and indebted. Huh? And uh, and then the one has to get punishment for that in the following lifetimes. Right? Mm-hmm. So, now the I was telling about taking resources, taking money from other people. Now we can also say about accountability for the services given. Right? Mm-hmm. If uh, you are given some service, while taking service only you should think, will I be able to do or not? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you take a service, and then we don't complete it in the stipulated time. Then when seniors ask, why you didn't complete it? He said, Toji, don't you see how busy I am? You know? I have my exams are coming up. I have to do this, I have to do that. Then what you will say? This you should have told before. Huh? You didn't tell before. Now you are telling last minute. Okay, now I'll take it and give it to somebody else. They may give it. But will they be happy with you? They won't be happy. You see, he's not accountable. fellow. Next time when some good opportunity comes, they won't give you. Hmm? They will say that he's not a very dependable person. And this is not only in your... In your, in your temple or voice center, it's also in the company also. This is a kind of culture it is. Yeah. It's a kind of culture. Some boys, want, what they do, in the company, the boss gives you a job, they'll complete the job and then they'll be just sitting at the table and you know, playing in the computer or looking here and there until the next job is given. Correct, no? And the boss comes after a week and says, what were you doing last one week? He says, sir, you didn't give anything. So I didn't do anything. Yeah. Okay, now I'm giving you one thing, take it. Then the boss understands. This fellow is a lazy fellow. Mm-hmm. If there is some free time, he will not look for new opportunities. Mm-hmm. He will not, uh, he, he is not a growing fellow. He is a stuck fellow. Mm-hmm. He is not a thinking fellow. He is a dead fellow. Mm-hmm. He thinks like that. Then tomorrow, when opportunity for becoming a team lead comes, will he choose? No. Mm-hmm. He will say that, right? If I make him leader, the whole team will be lazy teams. He will think like that. But, if you are given one service, you did the service, and then you go and ask, oh, any other service? Can I do for you? Now I've completed the service. And, and then not only that, you you come up with ideas on how the service can be made better. Yeah. You can offer, oh, this service takes this much time, but now I found out alternative way by which it can be completed in this much time. Yeah. Then the superior will be happy. He will think he's a smart fellow. Huh? He's come up with the new ideas. Now, when the opportunities come, then he will think, if you make him the team lead, he will make all his people very efficient. Correct, no? So, this uh, quality of accountability for one service, like Hanuman, for example. Huh? Hanuman was told to, you know, go and get that Sanjeevani Jadi booty. Correct, no? So, when he was flying up in the sky, you know, one sage was calling him down. See, if a saintly person calls down, you can't uh, say no. Hanuman quickly flew down and told the uh, offered obeisance of him and said, Sir, I am on a very, very busy service now. I can't divert my attention. He tell me quickly, well, you want any help? He asked. So he said, no, no, no. Mm. You are a very famous personality. I thought I'll invite you to my 
cottage and give you some fruits. Anuman said, oh, okay, give me the fruits, I'll take it and fly. It's getting late for me. But Shay said, no, 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 you should come and sit and take properly. And before I feed you, you should take a bath also and come. Okay, I'll take a quick bath and come. So he went and submerged himself in the pond. That time one big crocodile came and caught hold of Hanuman's leg. And Hanuman tore open the crocodile's mouth and killed him. And when he killed the crocodile, out of the crocodile came a big Rakshasa who loudly shouted, ah, like so and he died. Then he understood the crocodile was not a crocodile. It was a demon who had uh, transformed himself into crocodile cats and more. There was a bloody mess and Hanuman walked to the bath and then he came. He thought, what a crazy thing it is. But when he came to ashram, to the cottage, uh, and the sage is supposed to give him fruits, he became another Rakshasa. He was not a sage. He, he was a Rakshasa in the disguise of a sage. He also attacked the Hanuman. Because his idea was, first this fellow should die by the other Rakshasa. If he couldn't make it, then I will do it. And all these are henchmen of Ravana. Uh, so because the whole idea was to not allow him to bring the Sanjivani Jadi Bhutti. Because otherwise Lakshman will get up. That was Ravana's plan, isn't it? So he again fought with this Rakshasa, finished him also. Uh, then Anuman flew up again. Uh, and then he went, when he went to the mountain, the Sanjivani Jadi Bhutti, you know, it, it suppose supposed to be glowing and very prominently visible, but it was hiding. Uh, he searched, 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 moved, moved aside all the plants. He, somehow he couldn't find it. Huh? And I was wondering what to do. Without this, uh, Lakshman cannot be woken up. So, whenever a person is confused uh, or indecisive, one should remember the Lord immediately. Huh? Just like uh, Hanuman, I mean, sorry, uh, Arjuna was confused. He took shelter of Krishna in the battle of Kurukshetra, correct? No? Hanuman also thought of the Lord, what I should do now? Immediately got an idea. Let me uh, cut the mountain in the top. Huh? And then he uh, took that medicinal portion, that uh, wherever it was there, and he took it and flew back. Flew, flew back. He must have seen Hanuman flying with that mountain. Huh? He brought it. As soon as he brought it to Lanka, the Vaidyaji could find out the medicine. Huh? At that time, uh, and Hanuman could not locate it, but uh, the Vaidyaji found out. And then he took the medicine and then put it on the nose of Lakshman. Lakshman got up after that. Mm-hmm. Lord Rama was very happy, pleased with that. And then Hanuman said, because I cut the mountain and brought it, it is not proper. You should not steal anything from anybody. So I'll go back and put it. So he flew back and put it back. The same place where it was there and he came back after that. So here you can see Hanuman's uh, accountability uh, to the service given to him. Now he faced many obstacles on the way. Now, uh, because Rakshasa came, he, he didn't say that because these guys came on my way, therefore I could not bring it back. He didn't say that. Nor did he say I couldn't find the Jadi huh? He didn't come back and give hundred reasons why I couldn't bring it. Huh? So the idea is the end result should be accomplished. Huh? So the sur- doing the service taken is a very, very important thing. And if you cannot do, you know, telling on time also, is a, that's also accountability. Huh? For example, I took a service which I will do in one week. In two days only, I realized I have too many things to do. Then go to the authority and say, Prabhu, uh, you know, with a good heart, I took it took it up. But now I feel it's difficult huh? because suddenly some surprise tests are coming now. Huh? So if you don't mind, can I hand it over to another devotee? And I have also found one another devotee who is free, is willing to do. With your permission, can I hand over? And what do your boss say? It's so wonderful. You are so accountable. Not only you are honestly admitting, but you are also you are finding out a suitable candidate to do the service. Many times, you know, for example, you are uh, working uh, in, in a company. The company has given you uh, your kind of, what do you call it, you are given a bond to the company. Uh, you know, that in case you leave, you have to pay some 50,000 or 1, one lakh rupees, something like that. Some boys run away from the company, uh, you know, because they got another better job, correct, no? And the company is calling and they'll cut the phone, correct, no? So, then the uh, company gets very frustrated, correct, no? So, sometimes a boy says, Prabhuji, I can't pay so much money. You know, I uh, I only worked for two months only with them or three months only with them. I don't, I'm not asking them experience certificate. So, why should they be after me? They say, but uh, you are not asking experience certificate because only two months you worked there. Correct, no? But your uh, bond is for three years. You're running away. You are not a man of integrity. Huh? You are not accountable to the company. Ideally speaking, in case you got a much bigger job, better job, 
what you can do, you can tell the companies that I got a very good job now. It's paying me three times the money what you're paying. So I have to go for that. Mm -hmm. and, and instead of paying you money, I have a suggestion. I have another one candidate who is a better candidate than me for your company. He's already jobless now. Looking for a job, you can see his profile. He, he got better marks. He's a very intelligent boy. You can interview him uh, so that we can swap our place. Mm -hmm. He can come in my place and then if you allow me to go. And the company may check what he said. If it is true, they are happy. Then they may even relieve him without any taking any money from him. Correct, no? Quite possible. Or they may take half the money or something. But one should feel accountability because super soul is watching you in your heart, huh? what you are doing. You can't cheat. Correct, no? One should be accountable for such... Uh, because you have given a verbal promise to them. Many companies nowadays may not take a written bond, but they ask for a verbal promise. So verbal promise for man of integrity, verbal promise and written promise, there is no difference. It's the same. Because once you give a word, you will not go back. That is the meaning of character. Character means what you are when no one is around you. Right? No? Because no one is around you, but there is one person sitting in your heart. So standing in your heart, super soul. He is watching you. One should remember that always. So be accountable for the responsibility that you already taken in such situations. Any service given, one should be responsible. Now, when we talk of accountability, um, there is accountability for our material life, accountability in spiritual life also. Now I am telling you both the things I am telling you. For example, in material life, uh, also we can say that, you know, your father is sending you money. You know, just because you are a rich boy doesn't mean you have to waste the money. Uh, if you can uh, spend money in a moderate way. That is about your uh, father's money. Similarly, you know, material responsibility is working in a company, I told you, how you, you can be responsible. Eh? And material uh, accountability also means there is a short-term accountability, long-term accountability. Eh? There are certain things which you, you are accountable within the next two, three days. Mm -hmm. Then there are certain things you are accountable in four, five years. There are certain things you may be accountable in 10, 20 years. Also. For example, if your sisters responsibly get them married and settled, huh? that is one accountability which is a long-term accountability, correct? No? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Similarly, to complete your course successfully and come out with, with a degree in four years, that is also a little long-term, correct? No? And uh, for uh, utilizing the money that father is sending you regularly mm -hmm. and to study your uh, course as well properly and pass this semester with good uh, marks and everything. That is like immediate accountability. So you will see that there is a short term and there is a, a long term. Short term can be as short as within one day. Hmm? For example, uh, you are taking something from somebody in the morning, you are returning in the afternoon. It's a short term accountability. There are, there's, a, there's a short term, there's a long term accountability. Like in material life, I told you, same man in spiritual life, what are we accountable for? Let us begin with the sadhana card. Hmm? We are accountable for putting the sadhana card, you all have that uh, uh, board where you are, I think is it written sadhana card, is it? It's behind this, okay. Uh, so, your study study card and sadhana card, you have to be accountable for that in, that in spiritual life because Krishna says, Maam Anusmara Yudhya Chara. Yudhya is your profession, which is uh, your students. Uh -huh. And uh, Maam Anusmara is the devotional component. So, for devotional component, we have sadhana card. And for your study, we have study card. So, you have to fill it, filling up both. Mm -hmm. So, filling up both, displaying it on the notice board, even at the cost of being ridiculed by friends sometimes, people will say, hey, you got zero, eh? you didn't do your studies. Or you got uh, soul score 40 and uh, body score 60. Eh? You, what happened? Eh? Like that, people may ask you. Sometimes friends may tease you. Eh? So, when you put up a notice board, it helps you to uh, take the matter seriously. Huh? But if you don't fill it up at all, huh? you don't fill up, you become lethargic, uh, giving some excuses, I am busy with this, busy with that, then there is no correction, correction for you. Huh? You are not accountable to anyone. You become independent completely. Correct, right, no? So, and also over a period of time, what happens? Laziness comes in, and then little by little by little, you will see that you go down in spiritual life. Nowadays, there is one uh, forum called as uh, GBC, Sannyasis, 
and S G C Sanyasi Guru G B C Sangha. They call it Sanyasi Guru G B C Sangha. S G G S. Huh? They have yearly three days. They have S G G S. Sanyasi Guru G B C. So G B C is all the administrators of this kind. Hmm? And the gurus are those who give diksha. Hmm? And the sanyasis, they are also. So these people come together and they discuss about how is your sadhana going on. Hmm? You know, sadhana card. Hmm? And there's our study, Prabhupada book study about their preaching. Because who can correct them? Hmm? Because they are very senior people. So amongst them, they are creating accountability. They are making them into groups. Four, four, five, five. Hmm? And they make one accountability coordinator. Make sure this person is doing sadhana properly. <laughs> Just like we make for boys. <laughs> you have to make for them also at that level also. Because some of them also say that, although spiritually I am wonderful, but materially, I, you know, there are certain things which I need to improve. They are also trying to improve. Correct, no? Some of them may have a habit of taking too much engagement and sleeping at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. So they have, now they want to be accountable to sleep on time. Huh? And then... Uh, uh, some of them may, may not have been able to come for the Mangalarati because disciples cannot ask a Guru why oh, you are not coming. Correct, no? See, Guru is sleeping at 12 o'clock and he comes at morning 7 o'clock. Then all disciples also make sure they come after 7 only. Huh? Because anyway, Guru is not going to check huh? like that. But if a Guru is at 4.30 in Mangalarati, others see, then they will also come running. So now they are all discussing about how to, why they are making this SGG as uh, uh, forum because they saw <coughs> That uh, some people who have taken even sannyas and others, they have slipped down. Even gurus also have slipped from their positions in his con certain people. So, recently I was talking to Gaurang Prabhu, 2003 to 2024, you know, there is no fall. Nobody has fallen in, in this period because the sannyas ministry was started <laughs> and they have tightened the net now, you know, and they are watching very closely. They have put some mentor and all that they have put even for sannyasi level people also. They are making sure that they are being... So once the supervision started, fall down practically is nil. Yeah? And when there is no supervision, fall down was many. Because you are the Vindas, you are the king. You are like apex in the pyramid. You can do whatever you want and nobody can ask you. Hmm? Like, you know, somebody is sannyasi or a guru is, uh, you know, your young beautiful girl is going into the room and door is closing. The disciples cannot ask her, who is it? Yeah? One lady came to do chakra healing for one of the gurus in those days. He was a very big guru, famous guru. Huh? He collect, he distributed millions of books and you now very famous. He brought a lot of money to the movement also. Very sharp and very intellectual person. But then at one point of time, the name of chakra healing one, you know, young girl used to man, treat him. But later on, he fell down with that woman. Hmm? Because the disciples were afraid that we cannot correct the guru. Hmm? Now some woman is worried. Whether... In case you see you know, a young woman is talking to a guru alone in a room and the door is closed, she is regularly coming, then they can report to other gurus. Right? We are a little suspicious about this behavior. But these people are blind for their, I mean, uh, or they were sentimental or due to uh, too much respect for superiors, they did not correct. That becomes a very dangerous thing. No? So, and the result was a big man fell down. He had 3,000 disciples, out of which only 700 remained. Hmm? Less than God class. So, we don't want to lose any more such people in our society. So, now uh, ISKCON uh, leaders uh, for, in the GPC has become very tight. They have made tighten the net now. Uh, make sure that there is accountability. Mm -hmm. Now, this is are even, uh, we are even uh, uh, try, horrified to hear these things at the top level. But in our level, you should see that, you know, like a bamboo is more easy to bend when, when it dry, when it is dry or wet. Yeah, green bamboo is more easy to bend. Like you all are very young devotees. At this stage, if you are accountable, when you become very grown up senior, at that time also life would be very easy for you. Huh? But if you are not careful, huh? if you are not careful now, uh, later on it will be very difficult for you. At, even at this stage only you are not accountable. That say will you be accountable? You will say you get lost. You will not be accountable to anybody. You will become vindas. Huh? So, therefore, um, we should be accountable at this stage, uh, keeping very strict sadhana card. 80-80. Huh? You know, body score, soul score. One should get above 80. There are people like uh, Sundar Shyam Prabhu, Ramshivadan Prabhu. These people used to get 98. Huh? 
99 days to get the body score, 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 score. Pakka. Everything they used to fill up. After some years, I told them, now you forget about filling up. No need. Eh? You have become, you are beyond, uh, you know, need for, uh, need to be inspected. Because they are very faithful. Very strictly they follow. There is a Manmohan Shampoo. We sent him to Boston recently. So, every day he'll get up at 2 o'clock in the morning. He has never gotten up late. No matter what time he sleeps. Eh? Morning too, he'll be up. Of course, he sleeps early also. Like that. So, some people... I have that ability to rigidly follow your standard because that is there in their blood itself. Huh? From the family line, anything they take up, they do it very, you know, you know so rituals and uh, procedures and the protocols, everything for them to follow becomes very easy. And for other people, they don't like anything rigid. <laughs> huh? They say, don't put no rules, no regulations. I get tension. Don't, some people say like that. <laughs> So, whatever nature you may have, but you have to cultivate this. You know? If you uh, if you are not a person who is used to filling up sadhana card and filling up study card and time and putting, then you have to make a beginning. Make a beginning and especially those who are intellectual people, you know, they are not very much fond of rituals, uh, procedures, rights and then submitting and being accountable. They will say, what is this? You know? We are not kids. They will say like that. Huh? But, you may say you are not kids, but spiritually we are kids only. Hmm? If you don't do these things, tomorrow you will see that you, uh, while you are growing, you will see that slowly, slowly your reading will go down, hearing will go down, morning uh, attendance will be bad, and then your uh, you know, study chart will be zero, zero, zero. Hmm? You will see that everything will go down without this. So, accountability hmm? for our sadhana, accountability for our seva, uh, accountability for our time you utilized in the day. Huh? Morning to night, how did you utilize your time? Every one of us should see when you are going to bed at night, when you are lying down, you should think, you know, you know, how did I spend my day today? Was it fruitful or fruitless? Huh? Uh, it's sometimes we say, you know, koda, pahad, nikli, chuya, obi, adamari. You say, no? Sometimes you work hard all day. Huh? At the end of the day, you find the coach nahi huh? Nothing happened. You feel the day was a waste. Right now. So one has to become a smart worker. Smart worker means, you know the story of that uh, uh, crow which put some stones in a jar no? to raise the water level to drink. That is glorified in those days that uh, crow is an intelligent crow because he couldn't go into the jar. If he goes inside, he can't come out. Eh? But uh, he put stones and made the water level rise. But a more smarter crow is one who brought a straw from a neighbor, neighborhood fruit juice shop. Eh? And you put the straw, finished and, and they flew off. Huh? Isn't it? So you want to be a smart crow or a hard working crow? Uh, nowadays you have to be smart nowadays. Uh, hard working alone is not enough. Uh, in those days, if you are hard working and diligent and faithful and all people appreciate it. But nowadays you have to be very smart also. Yesterday one fellow came and showed me, he is making Bhagavad Gita into comics now for children. So very, very amazing pictures he had put. I asked, hey, how did you, uh, where you got these pictures, kings and ministers and all these things you have put? He said, oh, probably now the, you know, picture generative AI has come now. He said, it's very easy, he said. He just put a king and ministers and you put immediately get a picture, he said. Any picture like that. I, I also wanted to learn that. Because for making PPT, it will be very helpful, right? Now, now you have a lot of aids now. So many things you can do. You can give effect also. Huh? So many effects you can give. Huh? Uh, and now, now in homes also, if you see, people put the, around the pillar, they make it look like a wood. You know, it's a cement pillar only, but they give it a wood effect. You all have seen that? There are so many things one can do to beautify. People do that. In the same manner, in Krishna consciousness, you should bring your smartness into play and try to do things, you know, uh, in a very wonderful way, propagating society. You can't say that, you know, you know oh, it is too much. Therefore, one has to know how to simplify your service. Uh, actually, in case some service is very tough, you need to find out how to make it easier. Mm. One example I'll tell you. Say, for example, uh, you you have to go for giving device. Uh, but for you to hear all the device lectures would be difficult. Uh, so, if you ask someone has prepared notes, and what I would do, I would take three notes from three different people. Uh, and then, uh, when you go through all the three, you can pick up whichever one you liked and make your own notes. And then you can go and present. That is like a smart crow. Right now? So one can find out. Similarly, 
Sometimes you ask somebody, I take help from a lot of people also. I just give a call to one devotee and say, hey, do you have any PPT on this? Huh? Yeah, yes, Prabhuji, I made it uh, two months ago. If you want, you can see. So they send me and then I pick up some of the good slides from there and make my own PPT and they present it. It's a smart approach. Huh? Because you, if you have to prepare, it's going to take a lot of time. So we can, uh, there are so many devotees worldwide, we can take help. When I was making Gita Amrita Bindu, I was going and searching all the worldwide resources. So there was one devotee called Amritananda Prabhu uh, living in Seattle, you know. So he was very good in collecting pictures of Krishna, Arjuna and all these Pandavas and there are all these wonderful pictures and uh, he had made some uh, uh, slides. But the slides had a lot of content was there. Uh, so then I wrote a mail to him, took his number and called him and asked, can I use these pictures if you permit me? And he said, uh, most welcome. Then I, I got a uh, good amount of pictures because for me to get those pictures on my own would be very difficult. The idea is, you know, we have to be, you can't say that the service given to me is a very big thing, I can't do it. We have to uh, find out ways and means to simplify it in a smart way. Correct, no? And uh, you should know how to effectively spend your time. Huh? Like all of you, you all are studying in a very famous college, your PhD, and you know, the computer science field itself has a big competition. Huh? So, there is a heavy load also. Huh? Yeah. And also, some, somebody gets placed in a very big job and somebody is laid off from a very big job also nowadays. Correct, no? When I was in America from Google, some 20,000 people were laid off or something like that. You know, so it's a big shock for uh, people who are laid off. So I asked the boy, how long you worked? He said, five years I worked. Did you save well? He said, I was earning so much money, I never th thought of a need for saving. He said, I was spending very lavish. I thought lifelong it's going to be like this. I said, okay, now you are laid off. Now you are realizing the value of money now. Huh? So I said, uh, henceforth, when you get the next job now, you should start saving. Because once you saved a good amount of money, then even if you are laid off also, you don't have to worry too much. You know, you have sufficient money in your bank account. And then even if, uh, six months you didn't get a job, you can apply for other jobs and wait. So in this way, we have to be accountable uh, uh, for the services taken huh? and for the sadhana that we are supposed to perform. Now I will give you some examples of accountability huh? from the Shastra. For example, Madhavendra Puri was told in a dream by Supreme Lord that Gopal, he says, you know, go and get me Chandan. Correct, no? Imagine if any of us got the dream, we may think, thank God it was only a dream. You know, if Lord directly told me, I should have taken seriously, isn't it? But he didn't say that. Huh? He said, Lord came in a dream. I can't say no. So he went to uh, uh, Puri. See, where is Vandavan? Where is Puri? Thousand miles. Huh? You know, he went such a long distance. Even Lord felt pity seeing Madhavendra Puri. He said, hey, this fellow has taken my instruction so seriously. Huh? Lord told, okay, okay, don't bring it back to me here all the way. You just uh, give it to that uh, Shri Tsar Gopinath. Huh? So Lord told him to give it. So how accountable he is, you can see that. Huh? Acharya's teacher's accountability. Shil Prabhupada also, what an accountability. His guru told him when he was a young boy in 1922. So that time his age was 26. You know, he had a small boy also. And uh, when he met his guru, his guru said, uh, you know, why don't you preach this message in the Western world? Isn't it? But that instruction, he took it to his heart. Later on, he wrote a letter in 1933. You know, his guru, uh, 1936, when his guru left the world, that time Prabhupada wrote one letter. So, 1922, 1933, 1936, three times his guru gave the same instruction. Then Prabhupada took it to his heart. And 1965, after Vanaprasth, he took sannyas. You know, and then he, how very carefully he executed the mission. You know, even, in, uh, even after a couple of heart attacks, you can see. So accountable he was. His guru said, if you ever get money, print books. So he started BBT. Hmm? And his guru said, preach to the Western world. He started ISKCON. Huh? So ISKCON and BBT are the two great examples of how Prabhupada, account, in an accountable way, he fulfilled the desires of his spiritual master. Correct now? Yeah. In the same manner, you will see that Rama was told to go to forest for 14 years. Huh? Very, very difficult task, but he fulfilled it. You will see that. Later on, when he became, Patapishya got over, he became a king. He, uh, many would expect that he would rule very happily forever. Huh? But then one Dobi suspected, you know, about Sita's character. So he sent Sita to Valmiki's ashram away, correct, no? 
because Caesar's wife must be above suspicion, it is said. That means king's character cannot be doubted by the Praja. If Praja doubts king's character, they cannot respect the king. And then they will also become irreligious. Hmm? So for in order to avoid that, he sent Sita away. So you can see how difficult is the king's task. Huh? He was not only accountable to his superiors, he was also accountable to his subordinates also. Hmm? We can see that. Um, to keep them in proper uh, position. Hmm? Similarly, you will see when Krishna was suspected, uh, one fellow called Satrajit said, Prayaha Krishnena Nihato Manigrivo Vanam Gataha he said, maybe I think Krishna has taken the Shamanaka as well uh, by killing my brother Prasena. Like that he started spreading rumor. Karne, Karne, Ajapan, Jana. It is said, from one year to another year, in Dwaraka people started talking about it. When Krishna saw that there is a suspicion amongst the people, now I, I have to rectify the suspicion. Otherwise, it's not good for the Praja to have doubt about the king. Huh? So what he did? He went to the forest. He saw the lion was dead. Um, then he went to Prasena was dead because Prasena was killed by the lion. Huh? And then lion was dead because Jambon slapped the lion. Huh? Then he went to see Jambon's place and the Shamanaka Jol was there. So he brought it out. He brought it back and gave it to Satrajit. So you can see how as uh, king of the country, he is accountable for his people. Correct, no? Yeah. Nowadays, for example, if anybody gives feedback to the management, people become angry. <laughs> Who is the giving feedback? Huh? So, now, then later on, what I did in our temple, we started a feedback system. Ten feedback one, feedback two, feedback three. So, ten email IDs we have. Any Tom, Dick and Harry can send feedback to the managers now. And sometimes when, he, when feedback would go to managers, I am also in CC. So, one manager, one of the leaders was asking, Hey, who are you? Come out. <laughs> Don't be in the hiding and criticizing, you know, the management. Come out. Because that fellow had written one time, that Oji chapatis are very dry or whatever. Huh? Or sometimes you would say in the Govindas, you know, they, sh they are not selling, uh, the unsold items uh, should not be kept for more than two days or whatever, something like that. So, when they give feedback, I told the leaders that you cannot become angry. Huh? Unless you, uh, you know, you are accepting feedback like gulab jamun. Huh? Only then your uh, movement has a chance to grow. Huh? So, you have, that means, you know, why the leader becomes angry, he may agree to be accountable to his superior, but not to his subordinates. Right, no? Like, for example, subordinate is asking, Prabhuji, our brahmachari who comes to our center, you know, morning, uh, the midway in the japa, he goes to his room huh? and he closes the door. We are little suspicious what is happening inside the door. Huh? You know, one day he for forgot to latch the door. Huh? Slowly they open the door and say, hey, Prabhuji is in uh, Lord uh, Narayana's pose. You know? Then all the boys went to their rooms and they went to sleep also. Hmm? So, then later on one boy said, Prabhu, we came to know that you are dozing and sleeping in the room. Probably you are very tired. Huh? Said, Who are you to ask? I am your senior. Huh? If you say like that, then juniors will never trust you. Hmm? We have to be you know, accountable to them also. Hmm? Because well, how are you accountable to juniors? You have to be an example. Correct, no? By being an ideal example. Yadyad acharati sreshtaha tatta deve tarojana sayat pramanam kurte lokas tadurmanate. So the leaders set the trend and the followers follow. Huh? So, like imagine the uh, morning time in uh, Iskand temples, when the japa time starts, you know, everybody goes to their respective rooms. Nobody sits and chants. So if the leader goes away, then people also go away. If the leader is sitting and chanting, they will understand the importance of sitting and chanting in the temple hall. Correct, no? So, we have to set the example. We have to be accountable. Hmm? That is also accountability to the juniors. Hmm? Uh, uh, in this way, accountability to juniors equals seniors for sadhana, for services, for our behavior, hmm? for our usage of money. Many a times, uh, not only... Uh, 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 for these things, even people watch your behavior. Mm -hmm. People watch what you speak. People also watch how you do things. From that they understand what is important, what is not important, uh, what should never be done, and what should always be done. Mm -hmm. They understand it. For example, always we should be like one of the uh, one of the brahmacharis I had sent to one of the temples. You know, he along with his boys went to his room to chant. And they were not in the temple hall. 
I was wondering why. Then he called for the devotee. Why you are not chanting in temple hall? He said, no, no, Prabhu, in temple hall, the light is dim. You know, some devotees are dozing. Our boys will get discouraged. So I took them to my room. I said, who taught you this? I asked. I have never done this in my life. And then I asked, have you ever seen me in Kunjavari temple or you know, NVCC temple? Anytime I am not available in the same location where I sit. Everybody knows my sitting place. It's a standard place. And if I am not there, people know I am not in Pune. He is out of station. And where did I learn this? I learned from my spiritual master. Because my spiritual master has a certain place where he sits. You know, in Chapari temple. You know, if he is there in station, that is the place he will be sitting. And if he is not there, we can know he is out of station. And why he did this? He said, this is called as visible presence. In the morning. Every devotee should have visible presence. Visible presence means when others see you, they get encouraged. Okay, this fellow pakka. If he's there, he will sit and chant here. I told that fellow, come, bring all your boys back. Everybody should be in the temple hall. Uh, we're chanting together. We all help each other. So we have accountability to follow the norms uh, uh, that are uh, instituted. You may, you may say that, no, Prabhuji, when I go to my room, you know, the room is very calm and very nice concentration I get. Uh, here all devotees, everybody shouting loudly. But... What happens when you calm, room is very calm, you are hearing very nicely, slowly you will sleep also. Huh? Correct? No? Slowly your pose will change. Huh? From sitting pose, you will go to your reclining pose after that. Huh? Because you are alone and you know that nobody can catch you now. Correct? No? But when you are sitting with others, there is always help from other people. Correct? No? You get help. So, the Shastras are full of examples of accountability. I told you about even Lord Krishna and Lord Rama also. Huh? And Prabhupada, I told you. Acharya said told you. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and when one takes, uh, I mean, when one is accountable, then one earns a trust of others. This is one of the ways to win the trust of others also. Correct, no? When people know that he's an accountable man, he's a trustworthy man. A non-accountable man is a non-trustworthy man. Correct, no? Now, how to cultivate this quality of accountability? I want to say a few words about it. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, uh, Prabhupada writes in 3.30, you can read the purport. Uh, I'll just show you that. Bhagavad Gita, 3.30. This is the first verse in the Gita where Krishna drops the nectar of Surrender to him. Huh? This is the first verse. Please repeat this. Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyas Yadhyatma Chetasa Nirashi Nirmamo Bhutva Yudhyasva Vigata Jvaraha Mai and to me. Sarvani all sorts of Karmani Activities. Sanyasya, give up completely. Adhyatma, with full knowledge of the self. Chetasa, by consciousness. Nirashihi, without desire for profit. Nirmamaha, without ownership. Bhutva, so being. Yudhyasva, fight. Vigadajvaraha, without being lethargic. Lethargic means lazy. Huh? Read the translation, one of you. Therefore, O Arjuna, surrendering all your works unto me, with full knowledge of me, without desires for profit, with no claims to proprietorship, and free from lethargy, fight. Mm. Like that he is saying. See, uh, desire for profit is Rajaguna, and lethargy is Tamaguna. Huh? So he says basically, give up Rajaguna, give up Tamaguna, situate yourself in Sattvaguna, and offer all your fruits to me. Huh? He says here, here, Purport Prabhupada writes here. Ah. The purpose of the Bhagavad Gita. The Lord instru- instructs that one has to become fully Krishna conscious to discharge duties as if in military military discipline. Ah, see, as for military discipline. Uh, how many of you have been in NCC here? Any of you? NCC? You have nobody here, isn't it? So I was in NCC four years. Huh? So in NCC, if you are one minute late, you have to go around the ground one time. 
800 meter full ground you have to run around and come back if you're three minutes late three times you have to go around and our uh, sergeant and uh, and also the ncc top man is very strict huh? very very super strict about this punishment so punctuality they they will not compromise at any time uh, everybody will assemble on time in fact we were taught that we should come five minutes before huh? so that uh, you are on time so and also uh, the march past left right left you do know and then about turn and then how you do the things based on the commander so as we went over the years three four years we realized that one has to be very alert and attentive to the instructions that come from top like uh, only not all of us were allowed to participate in the mock war we had a indo pak war mock war they call it they put this water gas you know water gas water gas you know that water gas is a smoke kind of thing uh, they will create a smoke kind of thing and there will be uh, a mock war mock war is like a, not a real war it's a ncc candidates will do that huh? and there will be mountains also where the targets will be fixed and we are supposed to shoot the targets hmm? like that so in the mock war not all students are allowed to participate hmm? only students who are extremely speed they have great speed and who are very alert in attentively hearing instruction and then those who can execute instruction only they were allowed few of few of us were allowed in that like for example if the uh, if the instruction comes run you run uh, you lie down you lie down because when you lie down they can't shoot you correct no you lie down and then if you take the bonnet then you take the bonnet you know turn to the right run to the right and they will tell you so if a person is not having a quick action he was removed from the uh, uh, opportunity like that so that's that's the purpose writing military discipline now how is it similar to our uh, krishna conscious practice like in military early morning we have practice there here also we have krishna is kan also early morning practice we have seen in battalion also in camp you know soldiers getting up early in the morning and they keep lot in uh, very short cut uh, hair cut how many have you seen ncc cut <laughs> you seen that right now <laughs> very little hair they give so here we call it hare krishna cut correct right now <laughs> you know because you don't keep long hair for decoration you just cut just keep little hair you keep like that isn't it and also there they are uh, taught uh, to be prepared for a war so we are also preparing for a war what is the war war against maya correct no there they are taught comradeship comradeship means make friendship with other soldiers and fight against the enemy similarly here you make friendship with priti lakshanam with devotees and fight against the enemy of maya don't distinguish between uh, brahmachari grihastha and all that make friendship with everybody uh, be friendly and then everybody fight against maya by right? and then prabhupada said drop this uh, bombs in the laps of the conditioned souls which are the bombs uh, prabhupada books so we go out in the war and how do we perform the war by distributing the books <laughs> and uh, uh, and also harinam sankirtan also mm-hmm. prabhupada said uh, you know load your cannon huh? and go to the marketplace and throw the bombs he said so what are this harinam is the canon huh? he said hare krishna when you go and sing everybody can hear it <laughs> prabha said if you take a gun and shoot you may shoot one person huh? or you can like that you can shoot a few people correct no whereas if you go in a helicopter and drop the bomb a big number of people can be finished that is harinam sankirtan <laughs> you know? isn't it Instead of one one person, you know, you st- sit with one fellow and trying to convince him. Instead of do Harinam singing, then everybody hears that, like that is it. And Prabhu also said, "It's called bullet." Anybody knows what is it? Mullah Jaman. <laughs> it's called bullet. Like bullet knocks off a person. Similarly, it's called bullet knocks off in you know, a materialistic consciousness eh? and awakens the spiritual consciousness. Yeah. Hmm? And also the uh, you know the material desires, you know. Uh, are also the, uh, manifestations of maya they come in the form of material desires so the devotees uh, get rid of material desire so what is it uh, that is the internal enemy huh? that is the external enemy that is that internal enemy similarly within our group we have to make sure that there is no disloyal person huh, in our army because if there is somebody from uh, some other place and he has come as a spy he will take the thing so we one should not allow any spies right now so one has to Uh, drive out the spies also 
So in this way, you will see there are many similarities. But most importantly, the military discipline means very, very accountable to the superior. Very, we used to salute, like this we used to salute when we see the uh, teacher coming. Everybody will salute at the same time like this. So that, that respect and gratitude to the teacher is enormous in NCC. Huh? And initially there is a fear, but the fear gradually turns into affection and respect for the teacher. And that's a very good discipline they taught us. Huh? You know, and do, doing things on time. So Prabhupada says that the injunction may be a little difficult, he says in the beginning, as you saw here. He says, Lord instructor, one has to become fully Krishna conscious of the duties, as if in military discipline. Such injunction may make things a little difficult. Nevertheless, duties must be carried out with dependence on Krishna. Because that is the constant position of the living entity. Which means, uh, sleeping early, some boys don't like. In uh, some of our centers, the light is switched off at 9.30. I think in GGD, I think. GGD boys, isn't it? They switch off the light at 9.30. Kothra boys also. 9.30, all lights, everything is switched off completely. So then, um, if everything is dark, you have to go to sleep. Correct, no? Yeah. And then morning getting up becomes easy for you. But in some centers, boys are dragging till 10.30, 11, 11.30. Then I name of assignments and studying and all that. And the result is next day morning, some or other they get up and come. And the chanting time they will feel very tired, yeah, because of lack of sleep. But then I found out one interesting phenomenon. Why these people are going till 11 o'clock? Because evening when they come back from the college at 5, at 5 to 8 they don't do anything constructive. 5 to 8, till 8 o'clock they are wasting their time loitering, talking, chatting, doing some playing in the computer and everything. And then 8 o'clock they take prasad and then they actually start their work at 8.39 mm -hmm. and then they finish at 11, 11.30. So that whole lot what you are doing 8 to 11, you move, move it to 5 to 8 mm -hmm. and then go to sleep early. Correct, no? That's what I told them. So, therefore, this all this requires a military discipline. Huh? You have to, for, like, you know, somebody thinks, I am just coming from the college at 5, you know, immediately, why should I get into work? Okay, take some little rest if you want, 10-15 minutes, and then get up and wash your legs and hands and take some snacks and then get to work. Huh? Don't waste the evening time. Huh? Because for uh, karmis, non-devotee boys, they study late night. Huh? They do between 10 to 2, many of them do. But you are all devotees. Your lifestyle is different, you are sattvic devotees. So, you, what they are doing between 10 to 2, you have to do it. Evening 5 to 9. Correct, right, no? That's the best time. So, one minute should not be wasted. You have to, like, gold coins, you have to spend. Chanakya says, Aisha Kshana Ekopi, Nalabhya Swarna Koti Bihi. You should release the time like one one gold coin you are releasing. Like that you have to spend, he says. So, be accountable. So, we have to cultivate that uh, type of uh, uh, discipline. By disciplining, uh, uh, by that practice, I'll show you. They are written there. They are written here. In Shastras, you will find that always there are Shastras teach to take Sankalpa loudly. Correct, no? You are saying Bharata Varshe, Bharata Kande, Shukla Pakshe, uh, Chitra Mase, like that they will say. You have seen that? Uh, and uh, then they will say that I, uh, Radesham, Sharmanaha, name also they say like that. Correct, no? And what am I doing? I am taking a uh, sankalpa. Uh, like that they will say, why they say loudly? You are saying loudly to the deities, to the fire, uh, to all the people assembled there, and to the demigods, huh? and to yourself also. Huh? Because when you take a vow, solemn vow in the public, like I say, a, a man is marrying a woman, for example. Agni Valam they do. Why they make it uh, physical? You catch the hand of the wife and go around the fire three times. So, in public you have taken, so if you are a man of little prestige, you will never give her up. Correct, no? One has to maintain her life long. So, and also all the relatives are called, elderly, aged relatives come and bless also. So, divorce is not an easy thing to do in that situation. But nowadays, people just go to some uh, office and registered marriage, they do. So, divorce also happens very quickly. Huh? After six months, they will divorce. And then they will change partners, like changing a car. And instead of a small car, I bought a bigger car now. Huh? Like that, they change partners nowadays. So, that's why the Sankalpa was kept. Um, see, that's the point I said, just now. accountability will bring change. If you apply a bit uh, of force, yeah. So, now another thing also I want to tell you. Um, one should not expect 
that very advanced devotees should do everything as you are doing. Huh? Say, for example, one day Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was sleeping at 5 o'clock or 5, 5.30. Govinda was trying to wake him up. And Mahaprabhu turned around and slept on the other side. And when Govinda woke him up very strongly, Mahaprabhu immediately got up and said, you know, where am I now? He said, and then he saw Govinda, Govinda, why did you wake me up? And he loudly cried. He said, I saw Krishna on the top of Govardhan Hill, surrounded by all his covered boys and cows and calves. And and playing on his flute, and the gopis were collecting flowers to make a garland for him hmm? and offer him. You know, I was in that place, even I was also collecting flowers, he said. But you shook me and woke me up. Why did you wake me up? Like that, he cried. So now Mahaprabhu is getting spiritual dream huh? of being in Vrindavan like that. Now, can any of us lie down on our bed till five o'clock and say, Why did you wake me up? <laughs> you know, can you say that? <laughs> Isn't it? Because we are not in Raganuga now. Huh? We are in which stage now? Why uh, sadhana bhakti? Then we have to be here at 4.30. Correct, no? You know, but in Raganuga stage, there are certain leniences given for them because they are, uh, their heart is flooding with love. For example, when Prabhupada came to the matha of uh, Bhakti Rakshakshidhar Maharaj, you know, early morning when Brahmacharis went for Harinam Sankirtan, so both Prabhupada, our Prabhupada and Bhakti Rakshidhar Maharaj, they sat in a rickshaw. And the rickshaw went along with the Harinam. And the uh, Brahmacharya was jumping, dancing, doing Harinam. But these two personalities were sitting in the rickshaw and watching it. See, they have eagerness to participate, but they are too old to jump and dance. Hmm. Because he had this arthritis in the knee. Hmm. But still you can see how much his heart is longing to see the Harinam Sankirtan. Hmm. So he doesn't say that, I have arthritis, so I'll just lie down in the mata. In the mata. He doesn't say that. The heart is longing to go and see that. So as one becomes elderly, Sometimes the elderly devotee's body may give trouble for them. Like his own Ranath Maharaj uh, was telling us once that in Chopati, uh, his doctor has told him that you cannot get up before 5.30. You have to get up at 5.30, take, get ready and 6 o'clock you go for chanting. Because he has been whole night keeping awake when he was in New Vrindavan in those days. He was doing the night kirtan, his uh, seva was allotted to him. And uh, later on also, many times uh, when he would talk to other Maharajas and all, he would, uh, because many a times, uh, he would be talking till 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in, in gatherings, because they come only for a short time. Few Maharajas come. And they have to take out time to talk like that. And in Chaupati also, many of the people calling from all across the globe, like Australia, America, Canada and all of them, they call in the, in the night time. For them it is morning and for Maharaj it is night time. Huh? Sometimes the calls come at 10, 30, 11. So he has to attend between uh, 10 to 12 and it is related to GBC uh, and things like that. Now recently Mara has resigned from GBC now, just one month ago. Uh, because the GBC services were going to the peak. He is a guru also, he is GBC also. And uh, he was getting overloaded also. Uh, so he said, I have served for more than 30 years GBC. Now my disciples, next level people will take up. So he, uh, he even Shivaram Swami also resigned. So, uh, now Maharaj's doctor had told him, because you are not sleeping properly in the night, whatever time you sleep, from that time you have to count six hours minimum. Huh? Because you are sleeping mostly at 11.30, 12. Huh? So, before 6, 5.36, you cannot get up. And if you get up, your Ayush will be reduced. Huh? Proportionately, your life will be reduced. Huh? And the more you uh, are wearing out your body, you know, lesser and lesser will be this thing. So, uh, that causes pain in the body also and Ayush also is reduced. So then Maharaj told that uh, these days because of my medical reasons I am coming late but you Brahmacharya, you have to be at 4.30. He told us. Huh? So the older body, you know, as one gets older, there may be some complications in the body hmm? and there may be some exemptions given. For example, I have to take my fruit at 8 o'clock early in the morning. Sometimes I have my stomach biting. So during Guru Puja I have to go. So I saw that uh, in Hyderabad, when I went uh, for my fruits, and uh, all the temple hall became empty. All of them ran to their rooms. So one of the days I didn't go for fruits. Like today I didn't take fruits at eight, correct now? So some days uh, I take ORS in the beginning and I stay for the Guru Puja. I saw I was the only one there. Other guys are not there. Like, catch all the fellows. In the daytime we caught them. Everyone give reason why you are not there in the morning. And immediately our Ashram leader brought everybody and said, 
Prabhu was small and much, everybody should be there for Guru Puja. <laughs> this is the same in the material world. You set a standard and three months it goes. <laughs> After three months, again back to square. So the nature of the material world is always to uh, decline. Huh? When decline, again we feel, oh, no reading, chanting. Now let us read regularly every day. Huh? That's when you And then it goes for a few months after that. So then I told them, see, I am going for fruits. You guys don't have to run to ashram. You stay here only. Huh? You stay. Because generally, when I am there, all of them will be saying, Prabhuji is there. So we also have to be around there. They'll be dancing in huh? the Kirtan. Because they know that I am a, I have a good observation. I see who is there, who is not there. Huh? So they want to be in my good books. Huh? So they will hang around, they will stay. But for me, I, uh, in case uh, I feel that I have to keep them there and I stay, then my health issues will get aggravated. You understand, no? So, for the older devotees, there has to be some lenience given. And the lenience given should not be taken undue advantage of by the younger devotees. Correct? No? Now, for example, younger devotees, every day go on Harinam, PDC devotees, evening. Two hours they go on Harinam. Hmm. Now, can all the Safran devotees go? But the Safran devotees have many other bigger responsibilities. <laughs> like if you see, uh, I speak almost six to eight hours every day. They have lectures in the day. And younger devotees, PDCs have no other responsibility other than PDC service. Huh? So they should go for two hours every day. And the seniors in the evening time may have programs they may be doing. So you can't say that, hey, seniors are not coming, so we will also not go. You can't say that. So therefore, one should, uh, you should be accountable for whatever service you are given. Huh? Don't uh, uh, try to criticize a senior not knowing the full picture of their schedules, their lifestyle and their responsibilities. Correct, no? That is important because when you are very accountable, some kind of self-righteousness can come. I am a very accountable person. I am very strict. These guys are not doing, you know. You see, even as a young devotee, I am so advanced. Even as a senior devotee, they are not so advanced. One may talk like that. That is foolishness. Huh? That is simply self-righteousness. Huh? One should give up that self-righteousness. Huh? And nor should we imitate the Raganuga devotees. Huh? And nor should we be self-righteous and proud of our accountability. But we should be accountable knowing well that it is my duty to be accountable. Huh? Whether it is for money, whether it is for services, whether it is for sadhana. Hmm? And uh, so the short-term accountability, long-term accountability, material accountability, spiritual accountability, huh? accountability to guru and superiors, huh? accountability to the peers, friends, huh? uh, accountability for reading, hearing, chanting. Huh? So you make yourself more and more accountable, you will see your life will become very powerful. Advancement will be very, very powerful. Mm. So, uh, I had written some nice examples. I'll just show you the examples. Uh, see, when you stay after the war, huh? I'll just make it bigger. See, after, uh, you know, one fellow cried before the war, one fellow cried after the war. Who cried before the war? Arjuna. After the war? Yeah. Why both of them are responsible? Correct, no? Because they are concerned about the world. They are concerned about the praja. You know, they are concerned about what is dharma and what is not dharma. Papa me vashaye dasman hat paitana tata uh, Arjuna is saying, oh, Krishna, sin will overcome us if we kill so many people. Huh? Every one of his concerns are so amazing. Guru Nahatva hi Mahana Bhavan Shreyo Bhoktum Bhaksham Apiha Loke. He's saying that, you know, we cannot even have a verbal dispute with Guru. How can one uh, kill such elders like Dronacharya and Bhishma Pitamana? So that means he's a conscious person, correct? No? He's very he's conscious of what is right, what is wrong. So that is, that is responsible. No? So Arjuna used it also. He thought, he said that, you know, I am a, because I am a Rajya Sukha Lob, you know, so many people have to die in the battle, like that he said. Actually, Krishna told you, you never had a lobe. I ordered, uh, you know, you all should fight. But you can see that, you know, even though he is not uh, wrong, he took accountability, I mean, responsibility for that. Similarly, Parishit Maharaj also, you know, for putting the dead snake around the neck of Samikrishi, you know. You know when the punishment came, he accepted it, uh, uh, considering him accountable for, uh, for that.
Yeah, Prahlad felt a strong sense of belonging to his, his Guru Narada. Even while taking darshan of Lord Narasimha. Hmm. Actually, the sense of belonging brings about accountability. Uh, there is a connection between the two. Uh, like, for example, a small kid going to school, you ask, hey, why are you studying so hard? Which uh, mom will ask me, what is my rank? Correct, no? Because he has a strong connection to mom, he knows that mom will be unhappy if I don't get good marks. So, children work hard. So, in the same manner, in spiritual life, if you feel a uh, uh, sense of belonging to Prabhupada and Guru and senior devotees, then you also become accountable. Hmm. Yeah, later on, Ajamila repented, correct? No? He cried out that I drove away my chaste wife back to her home and I also rejected my old parents who are very pious. So he cried. He understood that I am accountable to all of them, but I did not keep that accountability. And just because I wanted to bring a prostitute and enjoy with her. Correct, no? And that, that repentance brought him to the right platform. Yeah. So in this way, many examples can be given. Shri Prabhupada ki, Gaur Bhaktavanta ki. Thank you very much. Any one question? Anybody? Yeah, yeah, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How many of you find it relevant? Yeah. Okay. Very important theme it is. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you for giving such wonderful class. I was asking that... Class is not wonderful. If you follow it, that is wonderful. Huh? You know? <laughs> Speaking is very easy. We have to implement it in our life. <laughs> yeah, yes. I was asking then. Uh, whenever preaching happens, then there will be, uh, we make some prasadam. Mm -hmm. Then the prasadam will be left. I mean, so, what is the accountability to that prasadam? So, you can distribute to beggars and all. Yeah. You have to find out where is the best place to distribute it. And make yes. sure it is distributed. Or one of the things in America they do is uh, keep it in the fridge at least. You know, the next day they distribute it. Whichever item can be kept. If it is sweet, you can keep it in the fridge. Rice cannot be reheated. Mm -hmm. Sambar uh, uh, and uh, uh, Sabji can be reheated the next day and then sent to some place. Actually, you all have to find out which is the nearest place where some poor people will be happy to accept and eat it. Mm -hmm. Then it is that way, it's not wasted. Otherwise, some, or one more thing is vermiculture. You know vermiculture? Mm -hmm. huh? You know vermiculture? Mm -hmm. huh? You don't know? The The... This kind of uh, uh, food items and other things, even the vegetable waste and all that, you can keep on dumping it in one place. Mm -hmm. Then they, then uh, from that, uh, they they use it as a manure for the, this thing and all. Mm. In the field, they use it. Yeah. In case you are getting a lot of such waste, then uh, it's not difficult to find out. Your students in biotech will help you do that. You can cancel them. Mm. Uh, but if you distribute to people, that is best. Yes, yeah, all right. Yes, ma'am. Any other question? So, I, I think you all must be perfectly filling up sadhana card and uh, study card, right now, regularly. Because young people generally do that. In the beginning stage, they do that at least. Yeah. Even if your life is busy, some uh, shortage, uh, fall, fall, shortfall is there, no problem. Fill it. Because at least you will know how life is going. You know? Unless you take a snapshot of your spending time and life, how is it going? How will you be able to rectify it? Right now? We don't write down. And gradually, gradually, the nature of the mental world is to go down. Right now? Yeah. Chil Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Your Bhakta Vrinda ki. I'll take some questions.